Imagine that after several years of digging and research, you finally get a breakthrough. This was the outcome after digging under a Mexican pyramid at the end of a tunnel. And archaeologists found liquid mercury alongside electrical materials. In those times, what were they for? Did they somehow know the value? What were they used for? What was its purpose for them? This find, however, might be the evidence of a royal tomb or a ceremonial chamber buried beneath one of the oldest towns in the Americas. Gomez, a researcher in the INAH, National Institute of Anthropology and History, was given permission to visit the area. Later that year, he organized a team of experts who began painstakingly clearing away surface debris. It takes a lot of work to excavate an archaeological site, but as they went down, they discovered a perfectly constructed circular shaft made of stone and cement that looked like a well. Gomez has carefully excavated the tunnel for more than six years. It was finally opened in 2003 after 1,800 years of being sealed. The 300-foot end of the tunnel, over 60 foot below the temple, is where Gomez and a team discovered three rooms in November. When the tunnel was first discovered, researchers anticipating finding a treasure chamber filled with gold. In the vicinity of the chamber's entrance, they came across a collection of peculiar items, including a box filled with sculpted shells, rubber balls, jade figurines, and jaguar skeletons. In 2003, archaeologist Sergio Gomez observed a sizable fracture around 20 feet, 6 meters, from the bottom of the stairs when passing the Temple of Quetzalcoatl. Following recent rains, a surface area became exposed, producing a noticeable hole and putting tourists at risk of harm. Gomez, who worked at Teotihuacan for more than 30 years, examined the site and discovered something odd underground. He had discovered huge quantities of liquid mercury on a Friday in a chamber beneath the third largest pyramid at Teotihuacan, the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent. Teotihuacan is a now destroyed city in central Mexico, 50 kilometers, 31 miles northwest of Mexico City, is where the ancient city of Teotihuacan can be found. This holy city's heyday, which spanned from 100 BC to 750 AD, came to an end long before the Spanish conquest. Since Teotihuacan is considered an archaeological park, most archaeologists are aware that every square foot of the site may be home to artifacts and important information about the area's prehistoric past. Unaware of it, they had found the main entrance of the structure, which dropped more than 40 feet, 12 meters. They lowered themselves down the hole that led to the cavern and methodically searched for artifacts, removing about 400 tons of earth, rubble, and bits of abandoned houses. The excavation team also uncovered the first of several underground chemical and mineral deposits. Several golden spheres in various states of decay were found. They were made of crushed rock, adobe, and pyrite, fool's gold. In the space below the pyramid, the team also found pyrite, an electrical substance. Pyrite is a mineral that can conduct electricity and generate a small electric charge when put under pressure. It is believed that the Teotihuacanans may have used pyrite in their construction techniques to move and shape the enormous stones used to build the pyramid. The Pyramid of the Sun's subterranean mercury pool and pyrite discovery are significant because they reveal new information about the Teotihuacanos' engineering and building methods. It also suggests that they were highly knowledgeable about the characteristics of substances like mercury and pyrite and were capable of making inventive and creative uses for them. Because it contradicts widely held beliefs about the Teotihuacanos and their civilization, the discovery is significant. They were less developed than their contemporaries as evidenced by the fact that they had not used metal or developed the writing system. The discovery of the mercury pool and pyrite, however, raises the possibility that the Teotihuacanus were more advanced than previous believed. They might have had access to information and innovations that have been lost to time. In the areas of the tunnel that were not lit, Gomez had also noticed that the pyrite-covered walls produced an odd glow-in-the-dark effect. Inquiring carefully about the remaining space, Gomez requested another laser scan of the tunnel to ascertain what lay in front of them. Unexpectedly, the shaft ended in a cross-shaped enclosure with the pyramid's highest point at the center. A drone's 3D laser scan revealed the length and depth of the tunnel dug into solid bedrock. The water, pyrite, mercury, and radon gas found in the tunnel suggests the smaller cavities in the lower spaces may have served as chemical mixing chambers. The search for a royal tomb is ongoing as of this writing, although important finds have been made that shed light on the tunnel system's proportions. First off, it's thought that the objects in the offerings had nothing to do with the system's original design by the people who discovered Teotihuacan again more than 1800 years ago. A glimpse of the original purpose of the pyramid complex and other parts of this discovery were caught, thanks to several significant hints. Gomez and his crew are painstakingly exploring the three chambers as they slowly make their way down the a wide, dark, and deep passageway beneath the pyramid, while battling humidity and now being required to wear protective equipment against the risk of mercury poisoning. Mercury was a liquid metal with no obvious practical use to the ancient Mesoamericans. It is poisonous and can be lethal after extended exposure, yet it has been located at other locations. Rosemary Joyce, a professor of anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, said archaeologists had detected mercury at three additional sites in Central America. After years of excavating and centuries of secrecy surrounding the rulers of the enigmatic, well-preserved 
City, Gomez hypothesized that Mercury might hint that his team was near to discovering the first royal tomb ever found in Teotihuacan. Gomez proposed a theory that Annabel Hedrick, a professor at the University of Denver and the author of books on Teotihuacan and Mesoamerican art, agreed with. The mercury may have represented an underground river or lake. The shimmering mirrored qualities of liquid mercury may have resembled an underground river, not that different from the river Styx, according to Hedrick, if only in the sense that it's the entrance to the supernatural realm and the underworld. Mirrors were seen to be a window into the supernatural realm and a tool to predict what could occur in the future, according to her. It might be a river, albeit a magnificent one. The liquid mercury may have been thought of as something mystical, there for ritual purposes or symbolic purposes, according to Joyce, who said that our Archaeologists are aware that scintillation intrigued the ancient people generally. Mercury wasn't the only thing that fascinated people, according to Hedrick. Several ritual artifacts were made reflective with mica, a glittering material that was probably imported to the area. At an area of the tunnel that hasn't been fully explored, archaeologists working with a robot discovered metallic spheres in 2013 that they called disco balls, close to pirate mirrors. Hedrick stated, I wish I could understand all the stuff these men are finding down there, but it's hard because it's different. Many Mesoamericans also valued water since they knew of lakes and underground water systems that could be reached through tunnels. Springs were also present at Teotihuacan, but they have since dried up. According to Joyce, the ancient Mesoamericans heated the mercury ore known as cinnabar, which they also utilized for its blood red color to generate liquid mercury. The Maya employed cinnabar to paint royal bodies and embellish jade artifacts. By contrast, Teotihuacan's inhabitants, whose names archaeologists are still debating, have not left any conspicuous royal remains for investigation. The tombs finding might lighten the mystery surrounding Teotihuacan's government. Despite its significance and influence, not much is known about Teotihuacan's culture and society. By the end of the 7th century, the city had been abandoned and the causes of its decline are still unknown. The mercury pool that was found beneath the Pyramid of the Sun may have new information about the ceremonial and religious practices of the ancient city. Because they believed it to have magical and healing properties, many ancient cultures, most notably the Greeks and the Romans, highly valued mercury. The Chinese, the Indians, and the Egyptians also used mercury for embalming and in their conventional medicinal purposes. I think it's very impressive that Teotihuacan's discovery of a mercury pool shows that the city had access to a prehistoric global network of trade and exchange. The researchers also found traces of an electrical substance which might have been used to direct energy through the pyramid and the mercury pool. The substance was discovered in a tunnel that was thought to have been utilized for ritualistic purposes beneath the Pyramid of the Sun. The discovery of electrical substances raises significant questions about the science scientific prowess of ancient civilizations. It demonstrates that they were far more civilized than we can ever imagine, and knew much more about electricity than was previously believed. Regardless, that's just my opinion. What about yours? Leave them in the comments below.